Hello and welcome to Memo Anime Recaps. Do not forget to like and subscribe. The story begins with Daryl's journey, commencing when he is summoned by Bashvaza, the new king of brilliant fire and Daryl's adopted brother. In the presence of other rulers, he is dismissed from the Demon King's army. However, Daryl initially believes he's been relieved of his position as an assistant. The other kings insult his comprehension skills, before bluntly informing him of his termination from the army. Dariel, who is already at the bottom of the lowest ranks in the army, stands out for being allowed to assist the kings closely, despite his many inadequacies, including an inability to use magic. Bashvaza demonstrates his superior manipulation of fire magic, but Dariel protests, citing a mission given to him by the former king, who is also their father. Bashvaza disregards Dariel's plea and unleashes a fire blast. It becomes clear that in the new Demon King's regime, there's no place for someone lacking magical abilities. As Daryl departs from the headquarters, one of his commanders taunts him for his weakness. He walks away pondering his uncertain future. Having served in the Demon King's army for all of his 32 years, he wonders if he can start anew. Hunger gnaws at him as he hasn't eaten since his expulsion. Exhausted and frustrated, he collapses in a forest. Daryl's attention is drawn to Marika, who emerges from the bushes. Suddenly, a giant silver monkey attacks her. Daryl steps in to protect her, despite his hunger and lack of powers. He struggles in the battle, and as his legs give out, the monkey lands a devastating blow. Near Marika's scattered belongings, he spots a dagger. Hesitant at first, he decides to use it and manages to defeat the monkey. Dariel admits that he imitated a hero he once saw, and is surprised that it worked. As he wipes blood from his face, Marika thanks him for saving her, comparing him to a legendary hero. This confuses Dariel, as demons aren't typically seen as heroes. Marika invites Dariel to her village, to express her gratitude and treat him to a meal. Hungry and hesitant, Dariel accepts. He meets Marika's parents and decides to tread lightly, aware that he's in enemy territory. Marika offers him a room in their house and her family's warmth touches him. Dariel shares his situation with Marika's family, explaining that he lost his job with the Demon King's army and is now homeless. Marika's mother is moved to tears and insists that he stay in their village. Dariel agrees to stay despite feeling conflicted about his identity as a demon. The next day, Marika's father, Enbel, who is also the village chief, offers Dariel a job as an adventurer. Dariel accepts, and Enbel explains that adventurers are registered with the guild and tasked with defeating monsters and gathering resources. Dariel feigns injury to avoid the guild's ritual, which is exclusive to humans. Marika helps him with the ritual, and Dariel is surprised when he discovers he possesses unique aura abilities. Enbel tests Dariel's affinity for different aura applications, such as slash, sting, hit, and block. Dariel excels in all of them, impressing everyone. Enbel suggests Dariel join the Central Guild, a prestigious organization, and offers to write him a reference letter. However, Dariel notices Marika's sadness at the thought of him leaving, and decides to stay in the village. Enbel introduces Dariel to the village as its newest member and an adventurer. While some villagers are initially wary of the outsider, Dariel's politeness wins them over. Gashida, a fellow adventurer, challenges Dariel's capabilities due to his low rank. Enbil intervenes and urges patience. Dariel receives a mission to collect herbs and is warned about a ferocious beast he previously defeated, which Gashida had failed to defeat for weeks. The shocking twist is that the beast in question is the same monkey Dariel had encountered earlier. Chief Enbil receives a report confirming Dariel's successful extermination of the monkey monster. He marks the contract as complete and chastises Gashida for his slackness, which indirectly allowed Dariel to achieve this feat. Enbil instructs Gashida to thank Dariel for his help, which Gashida begrudgingly does, though with visible frustration. Dariel is aware that this incident might cause friction between him and Gashita. He then takes on a new contract for hunting smaller monsters. Gashida mocks him for accepting such low-level quests and even insults him as an old recruit before departing. Before leaving the guild hall, Dariel informs Chief Enbil of his departure. However, Enbil stops him briefly, taking his hand and activating his rank. To Dariel's surprise, he is promoted to a D-rank adventurer as a reward for defeating the monkey and protecting the village. Marika interrupts, thanking Dariel for waiting for her. As Dariel and Marika set off on their quest, he expresses concern for her safety outside the village. Marika reassures him, explaining that villagers also venture into the forest, and that adventurers are mainly commissioned for the deep, dangerous parts of the woods. They reach a cliff, and Dariel is surprised by Marika's climbing abilities. She confides that she once aspired to be an adventurer to help her village, which explains her bravery. They reach the herb-gathering location, and Dariel begins picking them based on the contract image. Marika notices he's collecting the wrong type, and instructs him on proper harvesting. As they continue, Marika displays her impressive physical abilities, including spotting tracks that even Dariel misses. Dariel asks why she didn't fight the monkey earlier, and she admits her fear of combat, 
but appreciates his assistance. She asks him to address her more casually, but Dariel struggles to do so. They spot a deer that suddenly engages in combat with a nearby monster. Dariel and Marika step in to dispatch both creatures. Returning to the village with their prize, Dariel tries to downplay their achievement, but Marika's enthusiasm and tears lead to him running off in embarrassment, leaving the contract behind. Unbeknownst to him, he had accidentally hunted his prey again. As days pass, Dariel becomes accustomed to life in the village, mostly without any issues. One day he encounters Gashida, who unsuccessfully attempts to bump into him. Gashida is clearly agitated, and Dariel offers help, but Gashida angrily brushes him off. Marika warmly greets Dariel at the guild hall offering him food, but he proceeds directly to Chief Enbeel. Dariel reports that he has completed all the herb gathering requests, expressing remorse for inadvertently taking Gashida's targets. Marika believes it's common sense to hunt monsters when possible. Chief Enbill presents an emergency contract for a monster called the Blaze Death Scythe, typically only available to C-rank adventurers and higher. Dariel is concerned about Gashida's potential involvement due to his recent difficulties. Marika offers to accompany Dariel, but he declines, citing the danger of the mission. Dariel sets off, and as he does, the weather takes a turn for the worse, mirroring his unease. He reaches an area cleared by the snake monster from the contract, but senses something amiss. He wonders what happened to the larger party assigned to deal with the snake. Suddenly, Dariel sees Gashida being chased by the snake, and he leaps into action to intercept the attack. His large aura impresses Gashita, who watches in awe as Dariel manages to protect him. The rain begins to fall as they sit under a tree, and Gashita, now in tears, fears for his life. Dariel treats his snakebite wound and reassures him. As the rain subsides, they return to the village. Marika prepares a feast, and Gashita now treats Dariel with respect and calls him Big Bro. Chief Enbel is surprised by Gashita's sudden change in attitude, and Marika starts to feel jealous of Gashita's attention. Meanwhile, Dariel reflects on the Four Kings' ongoing battle against the human heroes. The story then shifts to the Demon King's army headquarters, where Zebiantes, one of the kings, returns injured after a failed mission against an unknown spear-wielding hero. Delroy suggests rehiring Dariel due to his competence and dedication. Zebiantes, however, vehemently opposes this idea, still unwilling to admit that her previous decision was wrong. After another day of questing, Dariel returns to the village in the evening. As he announces his return, Marika rushes out to welcome him back with her usual enthusiasm. However, her super strength accidentally knocks him back, causing him to bleed from his nose and mouth. Despite Marika's escalating antics, Dariel is enjoying his life in the village, which he has come to appreciate as a second chance at life. One night, Dariel, now bandaged up, has a hot drink with the village chief and guildmaster. He asks about the empty houses in the village, prompting Chief Enbel to explain the history behind them. These houses are remnants of a time when the village was thriving due to its proximity to the Mithril Mine, a location of great importance for humans. Mithril, a special metal with unique properties, was mined there, and weapons made from it were highly sought after for their superior performance. However, over the years, the mine became a source of conflict and was eventually seized by demons. The loss of the mine had a profound impact on the village. As the mining trade ceased, and the village's prosperity declined. Dariel contemplates the situation and decides to visit the Mithril Mine, his former workplace. He hopes to persuade the demons to sell some Mithril to him, which he can then sell on the black market to generate profits for the village. However, he is nervous about interacting with the demons, fearing that they might recognize him as a former member of the Demon King's army. Upon reaching the mine's entrance, he notices some empty wooden crates and uses one to disguise himself as he infiltrates the mine. As he explores further, he realizes that there is no one around. He drops his disguise and walks openly into the mine. He is soon surprised when an army of hooded creatures with multicolored eyes, known as knockers, begins emerging from the darkness. The knockers excitedly greet Dariel by name, indicating that they remember him from his time as their boss. Dariel learns that these creatures have been ordered to gather four times more mithril than when he was in charge. The order came from someone high up, and Dariel soon deduces that it was his adopted brother, Bashvaza. The knockers express their fondness for Dariel and recount the good times when he treated them with respect and care. They reveal that the last batch of soldiers assigned to the mine had been instructed to leave, leaving the knockers defenseless. Their reminiscing is interrupted when new soldiers arrive at the mine. Dariel becomes concerned for the knockers since they are not fighters. The soldiers start casting spells, and Dariel decides to intervene to protect the knockers. He uses non-lethal methods, hoping to avoid harming his former comrades. The knockers recall the laws of the Demon King's army, which forbid killing non-combatants. Dariel's speech starts to reach the soldiers, who eventually back down. However, Dariel senses a strange smell in the air, 
It becomes apparent that the soldiers are using some form of magic to identify him. The situation escalates as the soldiers cast various elemental spells. Dariel manages to counter their efforts and continues to protect the knockers. He eventually confronts the new commander, who is not from the Demon King's army. The commander admits that his appointment was based on nepotism, as he had befriended Bashvaza at a ball. Dariel spares the commander but punishes him by cutting off the top of his hair and ordering him to file his resignation upon returning to headquarters. The commander flees in a hurry. Dariel then removes the cloth covering his face, revealing his identity to the knockers. They express their allegiance to him. Dariel informs the chief about his successful recapture of the mithril mine for the humans. Chief Enbil is shocked, but allows the knockers to be taken into the village's custody, although it would involve all of humanity. The news spreads, and many villages celebrate the mine's return to human control, reinvigorating the village of the. As Marika rushes over with lunch to celebrate, she trips but is saved from falling by Dariel. Excited that he called her by her first name, she tries to hug him but accidentally knocks him out again, bringing a humorous end to the day's events. The story continues at the Demon King's headquarters, where Bashvaza, one of the four kings, is working in his study. His pet parrot showers him with praise for his intelligence. However, their interaction is interrupted when Zebiantes, one of Bashvaza's subordinates, arrives to inform him about something. Her attention is drawn to a giant anomaly in the middle of the room. Bashvaza explains that this anomaly is the place where they create their condensed magical weapons, primarily using mithril due to its high magic absorption rate. By continuously mixing and compressing mithril, they can create super bombs with immense magical power. He emphasizes his desire to establish himself as the greatest of the four kings with this new weapon. However, Zebiantes informs him that their mithril supply has been stolen by humans. Bashvaza's confidence quickly turns to dread as he falls to the ground. Zebiantes reveals that the Demon King himself has learned of this situation and is not pleased. The Demon King summons Bashvaza and expresses his need for more mithril in their conversation, intending to question him about the situation at the mine. The Demon King, a young-looking lord, exerts a bit of his power, causing Bashvaza to feel immense pressure. The Demon King brings up the fact that he had warned Bashvaza to stop making bombs and even increased the mithril needs in other areas as a subtle hint. Bashvaza admits his mistake and apologizes, but the Demon King berates him, calling his blunder unprecedented and ordering him to redeem himself immediately. Bashvaza tries to shift the blame to the knockers for the loss of the mine, but the Demon King only demands his apology, which he reluctantly gives. The Demon King further points out that if Dariel, Bashvaza's adopted brother, had been there, they wouldn't have lost the mine, emphasizing Dariel's competence, intelligence, and good heart. A flashback reveals Dariel's exemplary work and popularity among the demons, while Bashvaza resented him from the shadows. The thought of Dariel angers Bashvaza so much that he grinds his teeth together. The Demon King dismisses Bashvaza, ordering him to reflect on his blunder at home. As Bashvaza leaves, he recalls how his boss called him dumb twice, which infuriates him. What angers him even more is that the Demon King acknowledged Dariel's contributions. Bashvaza releases a giant fire blast, causing a visible explosion. Meanwhile, in the village of Thi, the mine's return to human control has led to a flourishing community. Dariel and Marika sit under a tree, observing the interactions between old and new residents. Marika expresses her wish to show this warmth to their future children, hinting at her feelings for Dariel. Though initially confused, Dariel realizes her intentions, and they share a moment of understanding. However, their conversation is interrupted by commotion in the village square. Dariel approaches the commotion to find his guild colleague Ishida, having an altercation with adventurers from Campbell City. Fitbaton, the leader of the Campbell City party, questions Dariel and Ishida's involvement in reclaiming the mine from the demons, doubting their capabilities. Dariel keeps his composure and, despite Fitbaton's arrogance, informs him of their success, downplaying it as luck. This only irritates Fitbaton, but the situation takes an unexpected turn when Dariel mentions their failure to handle a serpent monster in Campbell City. The crowd begins to show support for Dariel, leading Fitbaton's party to retreat. Fitbaton learns that it was Dariel who defeated the snake, and the crowd parades him around, speculating that he has the power of an A-rank adventurer. Fitbaton is left salty and frustrated. Later that night, Chief Enbul hosts a banquet to celebrate the village's newfound success. Marika overhears Gashida talking about Fitbaton's disrespectful behavior earlier. This angers her, and she prepares to confront Fitbaton. Dariel and Enbil attempt to calm her down. Marika accidentally refers to Dariel as her husband causing embarrassment. Dariel clarifies the mistake, but Enbil playfully teases Dariel, suggesting they should get married. The following day, Mr. Best Fred, 
A member of the Center Guild seeks Dariel's assistance in negotiations with the Knockers. Dariel's past connection with the Knockers allows him to help establish trust between them and the Guild. After successfully mediating, Dariel suggests a trade between the demons and humans involving the sale of Mithril to the demons. Fitbaton and his party, who are guarding the mine, object but are overruled. Dariel and Lizette, a former comrade from the Demon King's army, meet privately. Lizette attempts to convince Dariel to return to the army but Dariel refuses, citing his newfound allegiance to the village that welcomed him. Lizette relays that Lady Droids, one of the Four Kings, also wants Dariel to return. Dariel declines and emphasizes his commitment to humanity. Lizette's final attempt to capture Dariel fails when Dariel easily breaks free from his water-based spell. With negotiations settled, Dariel and Mr. Best Fred meet with Fitbaton to propose the Mithril trade, which shocks Fitbaton. Best Fred accepts the deal, and despite Fitbaton's objections, the trade begins. Dariel and Lizette later discuss the importance of the well-being of both humans and demons. Dariel hopes for a future where both species can coexist peacefully. The story continues with Dariel receiving an order from the Central Guild to revive the old foundry in the village to process the Mithril. After some searching, he locates the foundry but hears commotion coming from inside, which should have been empty. Fitbiton from Campbell Village has taken control of the foundry along with blacksmiths from his village. Fitbiton gives Dariel a fake smile and condescendingly thanks him for coming. He asserts that they have everything under control, claiming that the people of the village lack the specialists to handle blacksmithing. Dariel tries to explain that he was sent by Best Fred, but Fitbiton dismisses him, ordering him to go home and prepare dinner. With no other option, Dariel returns to Enbul to report the situation. Enbul points out that the mithril mine is crucial for humans, and losing the right to provide security around the mine may have angered Campbell Village. Dariel blames himself for the situation. Marika rushes to Dariel, seeking his help. She complains about an old man who has been causing trouble in the village. Concerned for her safety, Dariel rushes to the scene with her. They find the old man face down in some tomatoes, and Dariel initially thinks it's a crime scene. However, the old man wakes up, eats a tomato, and dismisses the situation as a minor issue. Dariel scolds the senior citizen for his actions, putting himself on the man's radar. The old man starts teasing and roasting Dariel, calling him a quack adventurer. Marika tries to attack the old man, but Dariel holds her back. However, Marika's comments about Dariel's strength pique the old man's interest. The old man reveals himself as a mithril blacksmith and expresses his desire to set up a shop in the village. He mentions that he heard mithril could be forged again in the village. Dariel's attempt to verify the blacksmith's identity with Anvil proves inconclusive. To resolve the issue, the old man presents an official summons from the Central Guild. Dariel then asks Anvil for information, but Anvil is unsure. The old man takes them to the foundry and pleads with Fitbiton to allow them to access it. Fitbiton initially resists, but eventually concedes a corner of the foundry to them. Inside the foundry, the old man examines the mithril, reminiscing about the good old days. He notices a pile of rare materials and rushes over to investigate. He also observes a frustrated blacksmith and scolds them as amateurs. He then proceeds to show the proper way to handle mithril in the forge, emphasizing the importance of temperature and pressure points. Dariel watches as the master blacksmith forges a blade from the mithril, and he's impressed by the lightweight and sharpness of the weapon. The old man instructs Dariel to channel his aura into the blade, and Dariel realizes the significant difference in performance. They take the mithril weapon to the woods for practice, where Dariel effortlessly cuts through a giant tree. Fitbiton arrives and apologizes, requesting the old man's guidance in mithril forging. The old man initially resists, but ultimately agrees after some persuasion. Dariel leaves the foundry with the old man to learn how to fight with the mithril weapon. Late at night, Dariel trains in the woods to master his new weapon. Marika brings him tea and expresses her concerns about his upcoming battle with Fitbiton. Dariel reassures her, mentioning how everyone has shown concern for him and how that's motivating him. The next morning, a crowd gathers in the town square to witness the duel between Dariel and Fitbiton. Enbul officiates the duel, and Fitbiton mocks Dariel's choice of a small mithril dagger. Dariel questions the rules of the duel, and they decide it will continue until one surrenders or falls. Fitbiton charges at Dariel, but Dariel's mithril weapon proves superior, shattering Fitbiton's shield. Fitbiton retrieves a larger mithril sword, and the duel intensifies. Dariel counters Fitbiton's attacks with his extending blade. Ultimately, Dariel shatters Fitbiton's new weapon, sending it flying into a villager's house. Exhausted, Dariel almost collapses, but Marika supports him. The following day, Best Fred apologizes to Dariel for Fitbiton's actions and promises to punish them. Dariel offers to help fix the house that was damaged during the duel. Best Fred is impressed with Dariel's conduct and offers him an invitation to join the Central Guild. Marika overhears their conversation and is concerned about potentially losing him. That night, Dariel takes a bath and contemplates the opportunities that joining the Central Guild could offer him, such as searching for his parents. 
Marika joins him and wants to discuss something important with him. Dariel finds himself in an unexpected situation with Marika, initially mistaking her for someone else. This misunderstanding creates an awkward moment, filled with anxiety, as Dariel fears for his life. However, Marika quickly calls out his name, causing him to regain consciousness and relieving his immediate fears. Marika then engages Dariel in a conversation about his invitation to join the Center Guild. She is convinced that he will accept the offer and wants to spend more time with him before his departure. Marika expresses her admiration for Dariel and acknowledges the positive changes he has brought to the village. She highlights his role in re-establishing the Mithril Mine, which has boosted economic activity and brought happiness to the village. Marika goes on to confess that Dariel is the first man she has ever had feelings for, leaving him even more surprised. She ends her speech by assuring him of the unwavering support support of the entire village and encourages him as he considers joining the Center Guild. Dariel, who has observed Marika's tendency to smile while hiding her true emotions, decides to stay in the village. He believes that leaving is not an option, given how the village welcomed him and set him on the right path when he lost his job. Dariel professes his love for the village and expresses his bond with Marcus, making his decision to stay even more resolute. He extends his hand to Marika, telling her about his love for the village, which prompts her to cry tears of joy, and expresses that he now has an additional reason to stay in the village. Meanwhile, in the Demon King's headquarters, Bashvaza finds his father performing powerful fire magic as part of his rehabilitation for a wound inflicted by the hero. Bashvaza is perplexed and inquires about his father's actions. The elderly demon explains the need for movement to expedite his healing. They sit down for dinner, where Bashvaza nervously discusses his role as a member of the four Demon Kings. His father, known as the Old Timer, is pleased with his progress, and asks if he has been listening to Dariel. Bashvaza, hesitant to admit that he fired Dariel, lies and claims he has been following Dariel's advice. The old timer reminds his son that his selection as a successor was surprising, considering Dariel was initially expected to succeed him. The old timer recalls his decision to pass on his fortune to Bashvaza because of Dariel's significant impact on his life. He inquires about Dariel's current status and whether he has been causing trouble as his assistant. Bashvaza, momentarily alarmed, assures his father that everything is going smoothly and that Dariel is excelling in his role. He advises his father to focus on his recovery. The old timer chuckles at his son's deception before abruptly flipping the table. Bashvaza's shocked reaction amuses his father, whose next punch sends Bashvaza crashing through a wall and onto the balcony. Bashvaza's cheek swells instantly from the punch. His father reveals that numerous demons have approached him, seeking his intervention to forgive their family members' sins after they were fired as Dariel's assistants. The old timer is bewildered by Bashvaza's decision to let go of Dariel, whom he considers a precious treasure. Bashvaza grinds his teeth in frustration as his father orders him to bring Dariel back and beg for mercy, the only way to maintain his position as one of the four kings. Bashvaza angrily rejects the idea of relying on Dariel and unleashes his fire abilities. The next morning, Marika's mother is surprised by her daughter's uncharacteristic oversleeping. She decides to investigate and is shocked to find Marika with company. Marika later apologizes for missing breakfast. Dariel arrives but slips and falls down the stairs, appearing exhausted. During breakfast, Enbel notices Dariel's fatigue and advises him not to spend too long in the sauna next time. Despite these events, Dariel and Marika's mother are pleased that he hasn't uncovered their secret. As the day progresses, Dariel feels increasingly uncomfortable around Enbel, unaware of the relationship between Marika and Enbel. Marika's mother, sensing that something is amiss, playfully advises Dariel to get along better with Marika. Dariel contemplates confessing everything to Marika's parents and possibly proposing to her. However, his thoughts are interrupted when Enbel calls him while he is holding an axe. Dariel fears that Enbel has discovered his relationship with Marika and has come to confront him. Enbel takes Dariel to his office and discusses their aging and the need for the next generation to assume leadership. Dariel believes he needs to confess, but Enbel reveals his desire for Dariel to succeed him as the village chief. Marika, hiding behind a bookshelf, listens to their conversation and compiles reasons why Dariel is deserving of the role. Though initially intimidated by the responsibility, Dariel eventually accepts the position, but makes a single request, that he be allowed to marry Marika. Marika emerges from hiding with tears in her eyes, and Dariel formally proposes, resulting in an exuberant celebration. Fast forward one year, and Dariel has become the village chief. The village has thrived during this time, especially in mithril manufacturing. Dariel shares an update with the late Master Smith and leaves a drink on his grave. He then returns home to Marika and their son, Gran. Observing the striking resemblance between his son and Marika, Dariel reminisces about Gran Versa, his adopted father who cared for him until he matured. Their family moment is disrupted when Gashida rushes in, frantic about the impending arrival of the hero and a party in the village. Everyone in the room pauses, 
momentarily concerned about the situation. Kashida manages to calm down and informs them that the hero's party is approaching. Dariel, still worried about his past as a soldier in the Demon King's army, hopes that he won't be recognized. He keeps his weapon ready just in case. The villagers gather upon hearing the news of the hero's arrival. Dariel, half concealing his face, hopes to avoid recognition. He prepares to welcome the hero, who, to his surprise, turns out to be a young blonde woman named Rady. The villagers are captivated by her beauty. She thanks Dariel for the formal greeting and introduces her companions, Sasha and Satomi. Dariel, relieved that he hasn't been recognized, is surprised by Rady's youthful appearance as the hero. Rady explains that her predecessor retired after sustaining severe injuries in battle. She clarifies her purpose for visiting the village, to have a custom mithril armor set made for her. Dariel notices that she uses notes to structure her statements and finds it peculiar. Marika offers a warm welcome to the hero's party and has prepared a banquet in their honor. She urges Dariel to hold their son, Gran, as she attends to their guests. Gran initially cries, but his tears stop when he notices Rady. Dariel is pleased that his son is being held by the hero, but becomes concerned when Gran starts focusing on her chest. He can't help but suspect that Gran is his son due to his actions. The story continues with Sesha, Satomi, and Lady waking up in the village after a good night's sleep. They greet Chief Dariel, who has just returned from an early morning fishing trip. The trio, along with Dariel, goes to wake up Lady, who answers the door in a disheveled state, holding her sword. It becomes apparent that she was sleepwalking, and her subordinates shake her awake. Lady quickly dresses up to look presentable, feeling somewhat embarrassed. As they proceed downstairs for breakfast, Lady informs Dariel of her two objectives for coming to the village. One of her goals is to obtain mithril weapons and armor, and she hopes to see them right away. Amble, who is present, mentions that it would be the first time the current hero has seen mithril, so he trusts Dariel to provide a good tour. Dariel takes Lady and her party to the Foundry, the only forge in the world capable of processing mithril. Lady and her companions are in awe of the grandeur of the workspace and the unique properties of mithril when it's smelted. Dariel explains that mithril is highly permeable to aura, making it special. He hands Satomi a mithril sword to try, and she is amazed by the sensation it provides. Lady is also excited by Satome's reaction. Lady inquires about the process of ordering mithril items, and Dariel introduces Sakai, the master of the forge and Smith's disciple. Sakai greets Sesha as the hero, but the misunderstanding is quickly corrected, and Lady becomes the focus of attention. Sakai uses a masterful technique to determine her weapon affinity, correctly identifying her as a slash-type user. Lady then moves on to her second objective, which is to recruit a fourth member for their party. She has been searching for the right fit for a long time without success. Gashida overhears her concern and volunteers to help. A few days later, Gashida organizes a hero's party selection tournament, and Enbel is emotional as he officially opens it. Participants get excited, feeding off his energy. Enbel explains that the selection process involves head-to-head -head battles, pitting the hero's party against 26 hopefuls. The participants are initially confused, and Lady holds a wooden sword, Satomi wields a pot lid and a ladle, and Sasha readies himself with a tree root. Lady explains that they are handicapping themselves. Participants rush toward them, but after a short moment they all lie defeated on the floor, wincing in pain. The hero and her party are disappointed that no one passed the test. Dariel, however, notices Gashida's arrow glinting in the forest, and he fires it. The arrow is made of mithril, and Lady senses it, dodging just in time. Gashida, perched in a tree, reveals his mithril weapon as well. He fires more arrows at the hero, who swiftly dodges. Lady comments on Gashida's impressive power level, but finds his accuracy lacking. Unbeknownst to her, Gashida can control the arrows he has already fired using his aura. Lady deflects the controlled arrows, allowing Gashida to charge up an attack. However, the hero senses this and begins her own charge, her aura's size surprising everyone. Dariel anticipates the danger and throws an apple infused with his aura to interrupt the confrontation. Lady senses his power and stops her attack immediately. Sesha rushes over and asks Lady if she was about to use that technique. Gashida returns, admitting he failed. Dariel comforts him, recognizing Gashida's significant growth over the past year, progressing from D-rank to B-rank. He tells Gashida that he's the pride of the village as their strongest adventurer. Lady challenges Dariel on this statement, insisting on a one-on-one -on -one battle. However, Dariel informs her that he has retired as an adventurer. Lady throws the apple back at Dariel, who is taken by surprise. The hero then reveals her real sword and charges up for an attack. Dariel recognizes her form, which was used by her predecessor to decimate their forces when he was with the Demon King's army. Lady releases the attack, but Dariel mimics it to neutralize her strike successfully. Lady is amazed by Dariel's strength and pleads with him to be the final member of their party, as he's the one they've been searching for. However, Dariel refuses the offer, explaining that he wants to watch his son grow up and take care of various tasks around the village. Lady presses him for other reasons, but Dariel stands firm, 
listing mundane tasks and his responsibilities as the village leader. That evening, Daryl spends time with his son, but Lady and her party return to persuade him to join them. He explains that he wants to be there for his family and the village. As Marika brings dinner, the conversation comes to an end, and Daryl reflects on his desire to protect both the villagers and his Demon King's army comrades. The following day, Daryl begins his daily routine, unaware that Lady and Satomi have decided to secretly follow him, hiding inside wooden boxes. They observe Dariel as he interacts with the villagers, assists Kamisakai, and takes on various tasks around the village. They witness the villagers' gratitude towards Dariel for all he does. That night, Satomi reflects on how individuals have different scales to determine what is important. Lady comments that Dariel values the things he believes to be important. Later, Lady meets Dariel near a waterfall to discuss the ability he used to nullify her attack. She is surprised to learn that Dariel imitated her technique and was unaware of its significance. She appoints him as her teacher and believes that his strong heart allows him to see the reality of the situation. Meanwhile, at the Demon King's castle, General Delroy expresses sadness over their inability to locate their former assistant. However, Zebiantes, who has been watching Dariel, is happy to have finally found him in the village, pays a visit to Chief Dariel in the relaxing atmosphere of the village. As they play with Gran, Lizette comments on how the child resembles his father. However, Dariel believes that Gran looks more like his mother. He's surprised by Lizette's skill with children. The conversation shifts to the whereabouts of the hero's party. Dariel reveals that they are in a neighboring town buying pajamas and should be all right for a while. He also notices that Lizette has been promoted to the special envoy position, a rank equivalent to the four kings of the Demon King's army. Lizette expresses his gratitude to Dariel for helping him secure the position thanks to their mithril deal. This position wasn't necessary before due to Dariel's past service in the Demon King's army. Their conversation is interrupted by the sudden appearance of Zibiantes, a member of the Four Kings. She is displeased with their discussion as it seems to imply that the top brass is shirking their responsibilities. At this point, Gran is asleep in his baby basket, and Zebiantes turns Lizette into her stool, relishing the sight of his terrified face. She notes how amusing it is to see someone in such a state. Lizette feels embarrassed and pleads with Daryl not to look at him like that. Zebiantes silences him, emphasizing that chairs don't talk, and that he should have expected punishment because he knew Delroy had been desperately searching for Daryl's whereabouts and hadn't shared the information. Their reunion is further disrupted when Marika returns home and is surprised to see a guest. She quickly brings drinks for them. Zebiantes expresses her satisfaction with Marika's considerate nature, but continues to insult Daryl's competence and appearance. Marika overhears and not taking such comments lightly when it comes to her husband, becomes visibly annoyed. Daryl knows Marika's temperament and tries to de-escalate the situation. However, Marika uses her aura to flick the drink cork at Zebiantes, narrowly missing her head and leaving a hole in the wall. She menacingly stares at Zebiantes, and the Wind King quivers in fear for the second time. Dariel suggests that they all go outside for some fresh air. They take a stroll through the woods, but Zebiantes suddenly stops and fires a wind blast at Dariel, who dodges it. She informs them that if words don't work, she'll take what she wants by force. Dariel attempts to reach a diplomatic solution, but Zibiantes insists on a fight, pleads with Dariel to stay out of it, fearing that a battle with one of the four kings could jeopardize his position. Nevertheless, Dariel unsheathes his mithril blade. Zibiantes still believes Dariel is a demon and scolds him for relying on a weapon. She charges an attack and Dariel leaps towards her, baiting her to use her spell. He swiftly switches to a sting attack, ending their exchange. Zebiantes refuses to accept defeat and suggests a couple more rounds of combat. The result remains the same. Before Zebiantes can initiate the next round, she changes her approach. She believes that Mithril is hidden in the village, so she decides to cast a powerful wind spell to destroy it. Lizette mentions that she plans to use a Geostorm to finish the fight. Dariel counters by shooting his aura at the Building Storm, gradually nullifying it. Zebiantes free falls from the sky, and Dariel quickly dashes to catch her. Lizette aids them by cushioning their fall with a water spell. However, during the descent, Dariel accidentally grabs one of Zebiantes' undergarments, leading to her embarrassment. She promises to tell Marika about it later. Dariel suggests drawing up a contract for an apology that will provide Zebiantes with some mithril. He shows her the price list, but she complains about the high prices. They agree to the terms, and Dariel requests that Zebiantes keep her discoveries confidential. She agrees, impressed with the properties of his mithril weapon, and requests one like it. Dariel explains that an exact copy is not possible, but directs her to the foundry. The following day, everyone gathers at the meeting place for the duel between Zebiantes and Lady. Both fighters have been given mithril weapons crafted throughout the night. They showcase the enhancements the mithril weapons have made to their combat abilities as they clash. Marika and Gran join them with an early lunch for the chief. They want to know who is winning, but Dariel judges them to be evenly matched. During the duel, Lady uses her scabbard to help her attack when her sword is blown away. Zebiantes retaliates, 
and both fighters give their all. The environmental collateral from their attacks overwhelms Satomi's barrier. However, Daryl erects a barrier, showcasing that he has learned the skill by watching Lady. Gran wakes up and witnesses the duel, but he's quickly put in danger as he bounces towards a crumbling cliff. Daryl rushes to save him, and Lady and Zebiantes work together to prevent a disaster. The family of three holds each other gratefully, knowing they've averted an accident. Zebiantes and Lady decide to call an end to their duel, gaining some appreciation and understanding for each other. Daryl watches as they plan to take a bath together. Marika points out that Daryl's dream of humans and demons coexisting is one step closer. They take lunch to celebrate this newfound relationship. The story continues as Satomi excitedly calls for Daryl, who comes to the door to see what the commotion is about. Satomi informs him that he encountered an extraordinary individual during his quest. Daryl's curiosity is piqued, but it quickly turns to concern when an older man steps into view. Sesha introduces the man as the previous hero of Arancil. Dariel, knowing the previous hero's affiliation with the Demon King's army, looks worried. However, his attention shifts when he hears Zibiantes approaching the front door. She casually addresses the ex-hero as Grandpa, and mentions his wrinkles, which makes Dariel worry that a confrontation is imminent. Dariel nervously apologizes for Zibiantes' behavior, and pulls her aside to inform her that she insulted the strongest hero in history. He explains that Arancil's scars are from tanking Grand Baza's most powerful attack, and that he's considered the strongest demon in the army. Zebiantes begins to look worried too. As some village kids approach the older hero, Daryl expects trouble and rushes to prevent any harm. However, he's surprised when Aaron Seal interacts warmly with the children, even juggling them. More villagers come to meet the legendary hero, and a long meet and greet follows. Dariel assumes that Aaron Seal must be tired after meeting so many people and offers him a hot drink and donuts. The ex-hero apologizes for interrupting Dariel's conversation with Zibiantes. Dariel introduces her as an acquaintance and quickly tries to keep them from interacting much. He advises Zibiantes to leave the village when she has the chance and to avoid using magic as Arancil can sense it. Arancil appreciates the gesture but questions Dariel about his goal in the village. Dariel explains that he hopes to achieve peace between humans and demons. Arancil reveals that he came because he heard that his apprentice Lady had been causing trouble for Dariel. Lady apologizes for her delayed journey to vanquish the Demon King, but Arancil reassures her, blaming himself for sending her off too soon. He wants to teach her more before she embarks on the mission, which pleases both Dariel and Lady. Dariel then offers to show Arancil the village's training grounds, but before they leave, Arancil notices Gashida watching from outside. Gashida has a reputation as their strongest hero, and everyone becomes excited to witness a lesson from the legendary Arancil. Dariel feels that something is off, but tells Gashida to watch and learn from Arancil. However, as the lesson begins, it becomes clear that Arancil is on a different level. He casually signs autographs while instructing Lady to attack him. Arancil dodges her attacks with ease and even tosses her to the ground effortlessly. Daryl is surprised by Lady's helplessness against the former hero. Lady thanks Arancil for the lesson and praises Daryl for teaching her. Arancil notes that Lady's sword skills have improved significantly and reveals that Dariel has been her instructor. Arancil then unfolds his staff and reveals that strong individuals like him hide their true power. He requests a sparring match with Dariel to see the strength that Lady speaks of. Dariel tries to play the retired adventurer card, but it doesn't work. The villagers become worried about Dariel facing Arancil, but Gashida defends Dariel's strength as they prepare to clash. Before the fight begins, Dariel suggests they have lunch first as they can't fight on empty stomachs. Arancil agrees and they head under the shade to eat. Arancil tastes the shrimp tempura and enjoys it, praising the food. Dariel notices that this moment makes Arancil happy as he hasn't experienced such pleasures in a long time. And the touching moment is interrupted when Arancil detects magic and launches an attack at Zebiantes. Dariel intervenes to protect Zebiantes, and a confrontation between him and Arancil ensues. Arancil insists on a fight, and Dariel accepts. But Arancil's power overwhelms Dariel. Lady pleads with her master to stop, but Arancil's aura makes it clear she should not interfere. Arancil's attack severely injures Dariel, and he collapses. Dariel's arms are badly damaged, and Zebiantes and Gashita rush to his side. Arancil comments on Dariel's growth and strength. Arancil suddenly hugs Dariel and emotionally reveals that he's his son. Dariel and everyone else are shocked by this revelation. Arancil explains that 33 years ago, he thought he had lost his son and wife during a demon attack. But it turns out that Dariel is his son, and he survived. Dariel is stunned by this revelation. Meanwhile, at the Demon King's castle, Granbaza visits the Demon King to request the removal of his son, Bashbarza, from the Demon King's army. The Demon King informs Granbaza that his adopted son, Dariel, has settled in Lux village, and may not be easily convinced to return. 
Granbaza expresses his love for both of his sons but emphasizes that Bashbarza's recent blunders cannot be forgiven. He remembers how he adopted Dario after a battle and named him. Granbaza's main concern is that Bashbarza's actions will bring dishonor to their family and the Demon King's army. Back in Lux Village, the shock of Dario's revelation about his parentage lingers as Arancil and Granbaza meet their son and adopted son for the first time. The story continues with Dario standing between his adopted father, Granbaza, and his biological father, Arancil, both of whom are ready to engage in combat. Arancil has his staff at the ready and asks why Granbaza is present. However, Dariel steps in and pleads for them to wait. Dariel explains that he's still processing the revelation that Arancil is his biological father. Granbaza had known for a while that Dariel was human due to his inability to use magic from a young age, but he still raised him as his own. Dariel expresses his gratitude to Granbaza for his support, and mentions how he never felt unlucky for not having biological parents. Granbaza, in turn, tells Dariel that he gave him something irreplaceable, and that Dariel is the reason he pushed Lady to become stronger. He considers Dariel his pride and treasure. Arancil drops his guard upon hearing this exchange, and Dariel and Granbaza share an emotional hug. Arancil becomes overwhelmed with anger, blaming himself for allowing Dariel to bond with Granbaza while he was consumed by hatred and vengeance. He questions how he can live with this hatred in his heart when he still has a son alive. Granbaza steps forward and offers to bear the responsibility for his colleague's wrongdoing. Acknowledging that the Water King's extermination of Arancil's family was a heinous act, he suggests that they put their differences aside and settle the score with a battle. Before the battle can commence, Marika, Dariel's wife, intervenes. She tosses water between the two old heroes, cooling their tempers. She pleads for them to avoid fighting and not to display such ugliness in front of their grandson. Arancil and Granbaza are moved by Marika's words and begin to play with their grandson. Dariel watches as the two legendary heroes bond over their shared bloodline and grandson. The situation is diffused, and the two fathers decide to spend time with their grandson. Meanwhile, at the Demon King's headquarters, Bashbartza, learns that his father has gone to the Demon King to petition for his dismissal. Bashbarza's blunders and failures have eroded the trust in the army, and even the citizens have lost faith in them. Bashbarza is determined to regain his status by revealing a secret technique to defeat the hero. However, his attempts to assert dominance over the attendants fail as they refuse to serve him. Bashbarza leaves, vowing to make everyone regret underestimating him. Back in Lux Village, Arancil and Granbaza enjoy bonding with their grandson, teasing Dariel and discussing his traits. Dariel watches uneasily as they interact positively, and he later helps with the cleaning. Marika insists that she'll take care of it, and takes Dariel upstairs to tend to his injuries. Marika comments on Dariel's kindness and problem-solving skills. She encourages him to eat a special dessert she prepared for him before taking his medicine. Dariel struggles with the dessert, and Zebiantes catches it. She misunderstands Marika's previous comment as a confession of love from Dariel and leaves, saying she'll consider her response. The following day, Lady pleads with her master, Arancil, to continue her training. Arancil explains that defeating the Demon King is politically motivated, and that there's an agenda to evolve humanity. He suggests Lady can give up on the quest if she wishes, but she decides to continue and find her own answers. Dariel is relieved that Lady is seeking her own path rather than blindly following the propaganda. Their conversation is interrupted when Ishida arrives in a panic, informing them that the Mithril Mine is under attack by a monster and pleads for immediate reinforcements. Dariel orders Gashida to assemble a squad and follow them. Marika uses her wind powers to transport them to the mine. Upon arriving, they find a giant, dragon-like monster spitting fire in the area. Granbaza suggests they land, and they realize they are facing a formidable adversary. Dariel decides to check on the miners, while the group discusses the best approach to contain the monstrous threat. The story continues with Dariel and Arancil preparing to confront the magical flame beast, Salamandra. The creature has been wreaking havoc near the mine, and they need to deal with it. Lady and her party attempt to engage the creature but struggle to make any significant impact with their attacks. Sesha, the Wind King, and the current hero launch powerful attacks, but Salamandra seems impervious to their efforts. Lady and her party find themselves in a dangerous situation as Salamandra counterattacks with a powerful fire attack that incinerates Lady's armor. Fortunately, Granbaza, the Fire Master, arrives and uses a magic spell to absorb the fire, saving Lady and her party. Granbaza explains that they are facing the magical flame beast, Salamandra. Dariel and Arancil, in the meantime, have reached the main entrance of the mine, but are unable to proceed due to rubble. However, Salamandra becomes aware of their presence. Dariel and Arancil decide to take on Salamandra together, activating their auras and launching a simultaneous aura blast attack. The combined power of the father and son creates twin dragons that hit Salamandra, 
causing the creature to crash down. With Salamandra momentarily subdued, Dariel approaches it, and the two share a unique moment of understanding. Dariel manages to calm the creature, and it retreats, leaving the group in awe. The others join Dariel, and Zabiantes suggests they are the winners because Salamandra has retreated. However, Lady notes that she sensed hatred coming from the creature. Dariel, on the other hand, felt a sense of nostalgia. Granbaza informs Dariel about the hexes and the dangerous path that his stepbrother, Bashvaza, is on. Bashvaza plans to use hexes to cause havoc and harm heroes and anyone associated with them. Dariel gathers the villagers and prepares for an evacuation led by Enbul. Before leaving, he thanks Marika for the gauntlet she made for him and gives her their wedding ring as a protective charm. Dariel and his support team wait at the entrance of the village where they are eventually confronted by Bashvaza, who is controlling Salamandra. Bashvaza creates a miniature sun to get a better look at Dariel. Granbaza recognizes the spell as Annihilation Magic, which is associated with him. He wonders if Bashvaza is as strong as his father. Dariel tries to reason with Bashvaza, but the latter is more interested in the fact that Dariel is married. Bashvaza sarcastically congratulates him and reveals his plan to destroy Dariel's wife and burn the village. Dariel realizes the gravity of the situation and evacuates the villagers, knowing that Bashvaza poses a significant threat. Bashvaza initiates a battle, and Dariel takes on his stepbrother. Dariel uses his blade as a whip, and Zebiantes assists in holding Salamandra down. Dariel tries to reason with Bashvaza, who reveals his desire to become the strongest by defeating everyone. Dariel promises to stop him, and they engage in a fierce battle. Dariel's thoughts turn to the village and the people he cares about as he unleashes a powerful aura blast. However, Bashvaza taps into the power of hexes, transforming into a monstrous form. The story continues with Saturn placing a five-layer barrier over Salamandra, to prevent it from attacking from the sky. Gashida unleashes an aura charge arrow at the magical beast and follows up with more attacks, creating a link for a bolt of lightning. A retired Aronsil joins the battle and for the first time, his aura is golden instead of the usual red, signifying his emotional transformation. Aronsil lands a powerful uppercut on Salamandra, and Granbaza follows up with a devastating fire spell that disables the creature. Dario, however, watches Bashvaza in shock as the demon transforms into the next stage of the Hex, revealing his monstrous form. Bashvaza attacks Dario with a powerful strike, but the chief manages to block it. They engage in a heated battle, with Bashvaza unleashing dangerous fire spells. Dario pleads for Bashvaza to stop the fight and tries to reason with him, but Bashvaza is not interested in reconciliation. In a surprising turn of events, Dario shows Bashvaza his own past, and the pain he endured as an outsider in their family. Bashvaza's mask begins to crack as he regrets not accepting Dario as his older brother. He reaches out to Dario, but the Hex's pain stops him. Salamandra starts to revive and causes confusion among the team dealing with the magical beast. However, Bashvaza manages to regain control momentarily by merging with Salamandra. Dario arrives, and with the help of Zebiantes, they break the link between Bashvaza and the magical beast, destroying Salamandra in the process. Father and son reconcile, sharing a vision of Bashvaza's past and their bond as brothers. Marika prepares a feast for Dario and the village, anticipating his return. When Dario returns, they share a loving embrace. The Demon King offers Bashvaza two choices, a second chance as one of the four generals, or descent into hell. Bashvaza, however, shocks the Demon King by choosing hell, feeling that his actions are unforgivable, and he must face the consequences for the sake of learning valuable lessons. The Demon King, initially planning to let him appreciate the second chance, begrudgingly expels him from the army instead. Bashvaza exits Hell and is reunited with his father and bird companion. The two depart for the village, intending to visit Dario and his family. Upon arrival, Dario welcomes them, and they update the chief on the Demon King's verdict. The conversation shifts to Granbaza, who introduces a sleeping baby to Bashvaza. The touching moment is interrupted by a lady who confronts Bashvaza for the damage he caused to the mithril mine. Bashvaza's father steps in to apologize but is stopped by Bashvaza, who makes a formal public apology, pledging to make amends. Even more surprisingly, his father apologizes too, leaving everyone taken aback. Amidst the commotion, Gran awakens and takes an immediate liking to Bashvaza. Dario observes with a smile as he shows Bashvaza how to hold the child. In a surprising turn of events, Gran calls Bashvaza's name perfectly, making him the first person the baby has ever addressed by name. Emotion fills the air as Gashida welcomes Bashvaza as a new older brother. Dario, recognizing the significance of the moment, gathers everyone for a special portrait painted by Gashita, capturing the essence of their family. Marika offers to make a better eye patch for Bashvaza, but he appreciates the original one she crafted. Everyone comes together to enjoy a meal and each other's company, creating a sense of unity and camaraderie. The next morning, 
Bashvaza embarks on a journey of exploration and atonement, with Marika packing a substantial lunch for his trip. Later that day, Dario informs his wife that he is going hunting for dinner. The family enjoys a heartwarming moment as they embrace one another, looking forward to a hopeful and peaceful future. At this point, we have reached the end of our video. If you like it, do not forget to put the like button and subscribe for more new videos.